Today on Rachel Ray, our 54321 show begins with a five ingredient steakhouse supper. Woo, look at that. Then, not one, but two five ingredient instant pot meals. Ooey, gooey, saucy, cheesy. Four things you didn't know you should be eating. Yes, I'm actually suggesting that butter can play a role in your diet. Then, Get the scoop on not one. Ooh, look at that. But two, three ingredient cookies. Plus, the two things no home should be without. And the one item you must have in your closet. Ew, I take in this white shirt. Out of drinks. Today we're counting backwards um, from five down to one. I'm gonna start off with one of my five ingredient recipes. Check it out. I thought it would be a fun time to show you guys and share with you a fabulous date night meal that you can make with just five ingredients. Um, we're gonna make a really sexy meal of tornadoes or beautiful little pieces of filet, beef filet, uh, and we're gonna serve them topped with creamed garlicky spinach. I know, it's delicious. Now that's the meal, but you make that meal and you put out a nice bottle of wine, maybe a couple of dipped strawberries and you will be dessert. Like, for sure. So, um, I separate the recipes. When I put them up online, you'll see. Always I have a couple of basics that I call pantry items. Garlic, salt, pepper, olive oil. I don't count those because I think we all keep them on hand and it's not the thing you gotta go to the grocery store for. So, over here are the five ingredients we're gonna use to make our entree. Frozen chopped spinach, which is one of the biggest bargains in the entire grocery store. We'll get to why in a minute. The tornadoes are small pieces of beef filet. Some Parmigiano Reggiano. Uh, one small container of heavy cream and a little dry sherry. Or you could use a splash of, of red wine or something to deglaze the meat with. Um, but I love dry sherry with, with steak. So for the first half of the dish, we're gonna start with our uh, creamed spinach. So we're going to throw, oh, a few turns of the pan, a couple tablespoons of olive oil in the bottom of a medium skillet. And we're going to add our garlic. And this is easy, if you don't do a lot of chopping, just take one of these little handheld graters and grate it right down into the pan. Now you may be thinking, date night and garlic? Listen, man, two garlics cancel each other out. <laughs> And it's just delicious. And this is really all of my favorite things at the steakhouse, minus the really heavy stuff, like, you know, fried potatoes and crispy onion strings and all that. This is just a really fast, simple, sexy, sexy meal. So, a little garlic. Swirl that around in your uh, olive oil. Turn the heat back a little bit here. I don't want to burn our garlic. Give that a little spin. Now, the chopped frozen spinach, I have a 16 ounce, a one pound um, size bag, the large like family size bag, and that's just for two people, because we're gonna squeeze all the liquid out so it can absorb the cream and cheese, yum. So the reason this is such a bargain is it takes many, many, many pounds of spinach to cook down to 16 ounces, which is what this is. So you're actually getting a lot more bang for your buck when you buy a good quality frozen spinach than you would get buying fresh spinach, which is weird, but that's just the way it is. And you can take it home, throw it in the fridge so it can defrost for you, and then you wanna wring out all the excess liquid so it's not soupy. You're not making cream of spinach soup. You're making creamy parm and garlic spinach. Yum. Now, anytime you use dark leafy greens, in my family, we always paired that with a little bit of fresh grated nutmeg. I call this a pantry item because a lot of people have ground nutmeg or whole nutmeg in their pantry. If you don't have it, it's fine. It's still gonna taste great with lots of cheese and then reduced cream. If you have it on hand, add a little bit anytime you use dark leafy greens because it really highlights them. It's also good with anything made with cream or milk. So we've got both of those components going on here. 
Now we're going to let that cook together while the cream reduces. So we're going to season this up with salt and pepper. Give this a stir. And then we're going to add the cream, oh, about a cup, cup and a half. I buy one of these pint containers and I don't use the whole thing. I think this is pre-measured, like this one here. Pour the cream in and let this just cook low and slow until the cream gets super thick and yummy and enrobes the spinach in the sauce. And then we're going to add a lot of Parmigiano Reggiano. Yum. I'm gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk about meat and how to properly prepare it. Right after that. Up. Reach is turning spinach and artichoke dip into your new favorite soup. There you go, guys. Yum! Then, get crafting without going broke with these easy DIYs. Yeah, nice. And... Creating food is my love language. And Rachel showed me that it's easy. The queen of cupcakes is quickly becoming the sovereign of salad. Mixed Rachel. ingredient date night meal. Uh, really sexy meal, I think. Really simple. We have a pretty pricey item on the board here for our uh, meat cut. These are medallions of beef tenderloin. These are called tornadoes. You can use any steak that looks appealing to you in the case that day or that has a terrific price. When it comes to cooking very, very lean meat like this, it's a quick, quick in and out of the pan, super screaming hot pan. Just caramelize it on the two sides and get it out because it will get very tough on you. So when it comes to cooking meat or protein of any kind, the favorite surface for me is a cast iron skillet. Uh, they're inexpensive. You see, you wash them with salt, then rub a little bit of innocuous or light in color, light in flavor oil into them to keep them seasoned. And they are truly your best friend, especially if in your house people love meat and potatoes. They give meat the best crust. The rules for making meat are when you're going to cook any steak or protein, bring it to room temperature, let the chill come off. When you put something very cold onto something very hot, the meat seizes up. So you want to bring it to room temperature. Take it out, pat it dry. Season it liberally with kosher salt or coarse salt, like I have here. And then you'll see that it starts to bead up. It almost looks like it's, it's sweating or something. It is literally starting, the salt is starting to break down the meat. And it's this juice that you want. So you pat it completely dry of its natural juices. Salt it and let it come to room temperature. So you start to get this going on and it's that that's going to make the crust when you put it onto the super hot surface. I love coarse black pepper with steak so I'm going to season both sides of the steak with that and really I think with this it's such a delicate buttery piece of meat that's all you need. I portion two tornadoes per person. We're making a date night meal here so I just have two portions. I've got my cast iron skillet nice and hot and I'm just going to add a drizzle of olive oil to the pan and get these guys in there. Once you add the meat to the very hot pan, do not mess with it. Let that crust form. The crust that's forming on there are the natural sugars coming out and caramelizing. In food, color equals flavor, especially when you're cooking proteins. So you really want to give it a few minutes for that flavor to develop. We're going to cook this a couple minutes on each side. Once we turn it, we're going to deglaze the pan and bring up the little tiny bit of drippings we get with the dry sherry, which is our fifth ingredient. Uh, or you can use a splash of red or white wine as well. It's almost time to add the cheese. So I'm gonna get ready to do that and just keep an eye on the steak. Let's, let's take a quick break while that's cooking and I'll meet you right back here. <laughs> medallions here in the pan and waiting for them to finish crusting up on side two and I'm giving the edges kind of a little bit of a roll oh they smell so good and it's so simple it's just salt and pepper and a very hot skillet that's really the only math to making the tornadoes or the little beef medallions mm -mm -mm. so 
For our date night, we started with garlic and olive oil. We added a ton of spinach to the pan. And then we doused it with heavy cream, about a cup and a half, and let the cream cook until it's almost cooked away. See in the pan there? Salt, pepper, and if you have it on hand or in your pantry, a little bit of ground or fresh grated nutmeg. Then the star ingredient in this spinach dish is the cheese, grated parm. So we stir in, oh, about a good solid cup uh, to cup and a half. So about two ounces of freshly grated Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. I mean, this spinach is just, I literally just spat because I'm drooling. <laughs> it smells so good. Now, this is all you need. This is a very sexy little dinner. This and a little bottle of wine and you're good to go. But, I think that if you want to serve dessert, you cannot get simpler than chocolate dipped strawberries. super dark chocolate, um, A, because it's not too sweet, and B, because many doctors on this television show, oh, we forgot to deglaze, put back in the pan, rewind, so, <laughs> I got distracted, it smells really good, so anyway, many doctors over the years on this show have told me how good dark chocolate is for you because of all the antioxidants, so it makes you feel a whole lot better about eating a bunch of strawberries. <laughs> So a little splash of sherry or wine, just to lift up the little bit of drippings in your pan. And because it just smells so good, it's so sexy. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Now we take our sherry glazed steaks, pop them onto the plate. Mm. Oh my God, they're so sexy, I can't even look at them. Yum. Woo, look at that. Mm, look at that color that I was talking about, that beautiful reddish brown. Mm. Now, always remember to clean up your plate in case there's any little dollops of sauce or juice around. Then we're going to top these with our garlicky spinach, our creamed spinach with parm and garlic. No, it's ridiculous. I'm with you. Sexy as heck. Now, love. Now, for the dessert, all you have to do is take a glass bowl, put it over a little bit of gently simmering water, and melt the chocolate. Dark, light, whatever you like. Give it a dunk and let it cool. I mean, done. So, if you want to make, if you want to make the really fancy ones with the drizzle, melt a little bit of white chocolate and you can make those cute little swirls on top. But I stop with just the dark chocolate. And then, the last thing I would pick up on the way home after I pick up my five ingredients or seven if you want to have the dessert, a nice bottle of red wine. Mm. Well, it's infectious. He is such a sweet person to be around. Our buddy Jeffrey Eisner is back, and he's showing you guys a couple of five ingredient, of course, what is he obsessed with? Instant pot recipes. So, right after this. is a force of nature. He's a wildly successful cookbook author. He is the king of easy dinners. He is an internationally best-selling author, by the way. And his latest book, Super Shortcut Instapot, right here, uh, has his easiest recipes yet. He's going to show you guys a couple of recipes, not just one, with only five ingredients. Check them out.
Hey, Rachel, it's Jeffrey Eisner from Fresh Luck Cooking, the Instant Pot Guy, and I'm here to give you not one, but two, a twofer, Instant Pot meals in two different pots, but the best part is neither recipe is going to exceed five ingredients. You heard that right. We're talking if you ain't got the time and you want to make meals on a dime that are going to taste sublime, and hey, maybe even rhyme, you've come to the right party because we're going to be making cheesy chicken roll-ups in one pot and pepperoni pizza pasta in the other. Let's do it. Cheesy chicken roll-ups, and all it takes is two to two and a half pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs or breast. Add that right to the pot, as well as a cup of chicken broth. I'm just gonna move my chicken to its most submerged in the broth. It's fine if some of it peaks above. I'm gonna now secure my lid, and I'm going to pressure cook this at high pressure for eight minutes. And now that we're done pressure cooking, we're gonna perform a quick release. Just like this. And now that the pin is dropped, we're gonna take the lid off the pot. And you'll see there's a lot more liquid in the pot now than when we began because that's made from all the chicken fat, basically, from the thighs. Even though they were pretty much trimmed, any kind of chicken's gonna release juices regardless. Take a large mixing bowl and some tongs and simply remove my very tender, boneless, skinless chicken thighs or breasts. It smells so good every time after you pressure cook. And now I wanna take a ladle and reserve about a half a cup of the broth from the pot. And as for the remaining chicken broth, I can either discard it or I can save it for something else. Whether I'm making soup or a sauce, it's great to have around the house. Okay, in the meantime, let's focus on our chicken. I want to shred my chicken in one of two ways. I can either do it with a pair of forks, which will happen very easily since it's so tender, or I can use a hand mixer. This is a great little hack to have. If you have a little hand mixer lying around, same thing you make a cake batter with, it's going to shred your chicken so easily. Let me show you. Just start on a low speed because we don't want the chicken to fly all over the place. So far we have two ingredients in here. We have the chicken, we have the broth. I'm gonna add in between two to four cups of a shredded cheese of your choice. I like a cheddar or a cheddar blend, that's fine. As well as an optional half a cup of a salsa verde. Then I'm just gonna stir all of my chicken up with the cheese. Okay, so this is the part where the recipe begins to live up to its name. We have the cheesy chicken portion of it done. And now I wanna take that cheesy chicken mixture and return it to the Instant Pot. All right. And then we're gonna hit that saute button to give the pot some heat. And as the pot begins to heat up, that's when all of the cheese will really melt into the chicken to give it this amazing, cheesy chicken-y consistency. If you wanna thin it out, that's when you use that extra broth of your reserve. You don't have to use it, it's an option. We're just about ready for our fifth ingredient, and that is going to be our wraps. It can be any kind of wrap you want. I am going to use tortillas, flour tortillas, but you can use corn tortillas, you can use uh, those egg wraps. I mean, look at this. Look at all that cheese in the chicken. I have my cheesy chicken roll up, just bursting at the seams here, and let's give it a try. Mmm. Mmm couldn't be easier or cheesier. All right, so we got one recipe down, which took basically no time and effort whatsoever. So let's do another one, shall we? Okay, so for recipe number two, I wanna show you how we can go from one extreme, which is chicken, to another, which is gonna be a pasta. And again, five ingredients. Now, one of my favorite things in the world is nice New York style pepperoni pizza. But sometimes I just wanna have pasta. So I said to myself, let's marry the two and make a pepperoni pizza pasta. I'm not kidding here. Watch how easy this is to make. Let's take two cups of a broth of your choice. I'm gonna use chicken in this situation as well as one and a half cups of a marinara or pizza sauce. Or, you know what, you want vodka sauce? Put vodka sauce. Just a little tip, try to make sure it's room temperature. Try to make sure it's not refrigerated because it'll help come to pressure much more quickly if it's already at room temperature. So one and a half cups of that sauce in the pot. And our third ingredient, our pasta. My choice for this is gonna be large elbows. It's like a giant macaroni, uh, but you can use any short form pasta. Whatever you want, just put it in the pot. And don't stir it, but just simply take like your wooden spatula and smooth it out so the pasta is nice and submerged underneath the liquid as best as possible. It's okay if some of it still peaks above. Great, that's it. I know, you think I'm kidding, right? That's all it took. Let's put that lid on the pot and we're going to hit the pressure cook button and we're gonna pressure cook this for five minutes. And now that we're done pressure cooking, we're gonna perform a quick release. Release the steam. And since the pin dropped, we can take our lid off 
and our pasta will have cooked perfectly. Now for my final ingredients, more marinara sauce, two more cups. I want this to be nice and saucy. Put it in the pot. And now if you had refrigerated sauce you're using, you could either just add it to the pot and hit the saute button and it'll make it hot, or you can just zap it in the microwave for a few moments beforehand. And I wanna add in two cups of a shredded mozzarella cheese. Put that in there, delightful. It wouldn't be a pepperoni pizza pasta without some pepperoni. Let's put that in there, about a six ounce package of pepperoni. Give everything in the pot a good stir until all of that cheese gets melded in with our pasta and our sauce. And just look at this, looking ooey, gooey, saucy, cheesy, and pepperoni-y. Are you seeing this? Hello, put it in a bowl. Oh my gosh, that cheesy top. I gotta try this out. Here we go. It's like pepperoni pizza, but it's a pasta. Thank you so much for watching and make dinner time simple, fun, and hassle-free. Enjoy. Thank you so much to Jeffrey uh, Eisner. I tell you, you're something. And Super Shortcut Instant Pot is, of course, available now. Up next, uh, our friend and registered dietitian, Carrie Glassman, is filling you guys in on four foods that you Mm, probably don't know that you should be eating. Uh, that sounded complicated, but it's not. Right after this. You know, we've heard the expression a ton, everything in moderation, but our friend and registered dietitian, Carrie Glassman, says that some foods that feel like indulgences actually have genuine health benefits. She's going to tell you guys about four foods you probably didn't know you should be eating. Check her out. Hi, I'm Terry Glassman, registered dietitian nutritionist and founder of Nutritious Life and the Nutritious Life Studio. And I am going to show you today four not only delicious foods, but foods that you may be avoiding because you don't think they're healthy, but they actually are. Pecorino, like other cheeses, is a good source of protein and calcium, but it has more calcium than traditional cow's milk cheeses. Pecorino cheese also has conjugated linoleic acid, otherwise known as CLA. And CLA is linked with reduced BMIs, body mass indexes, and the reduced risk of diabetes, cancer, and overall inflammation. I love Pecorino cheese in a Brussels sprout salad. Here I have raw Brussels sprouts. I toasted these almonds ahead of time. Then I also used dried figs or dates. Here I have dates, but again, any dried fruit really works. Chopped red onions. And then I have my simple lemon dressing, which is just lemon, olive oil, salt, and pepper. Just grate it on here. Again, it has a really nice, nutty, salty flavor. Gonna add some grapefruit sections. Mmm. Hit the spot every time. Next up, I wanna talk about dark meat. Dark meat gets a bad rap, and that's because it's higher in calories and fat than white meat. However, it actually has twice as much healthy fat, the unsaturated fat, versus white meat chicken. It also has an amino acid called taurine, and taurine has been shown to be protective of high blood pressure, and also has been linked with a lower risk of coronary heart disease in women. I'm just gonna sprinkle a little salt on the chicken. And then I'm gonna add some pepper, just like that. And I'm going to make a really simple, easy honey mustard sauce. Okay, so here I've got Dijon mustard, and I've got honey, and then I have some tamari, and I'm gonna add just a little pinch of cayenne, because it was a little more pinch, might be a little bit hotter. I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic powder. You can use fresh garlic, of course, if you want. And I'm gonna add a little bit of onion powder. Of course, you can use fresh onions if you want. You can also use shallots, tastes really good in there. I'm gonna mix this up together. 
I have the oven at 350 right now, and we're gonna cook it for about 45 minutes. We're just gonna pour this sauce over. And again, you can use as little or as much as you want. Spread this on here. Ooh, look at this. There we go. Okay, so this next food may scare some of you, but it shouldn't. Sardines. Sardines are one of my absolute fave secret health foods. They're high in protein, high in calcium, and low in mercury. They're also high in omega-3s. Omega-3s are those essential fatty acids that are linked to everything from better mental health to better weight and they are highly anti-inflammatory. Love those omega-3 essential fatty acids. So I'm gonna take these sardines, which sometimes break apart, put on the pan because we have olive oil. These sardines are in all, canned in olive oil. You don't even need to add anything to the pan. But that one broke apart. Okay, so these are done. We took them for about a minute on each side. Now I'm just going to add them to a cracker. These are nice whole grain crackers. Mm. Okay, this next one may surprise you, but I'm talking about butter. Yes, I'm actually suggesting that butter can play a role in your diet, specifically grass-fed butter. And of course, sparingly, by the way, grass-fed butter comes from cows that graze on grass versus grains. And those cows produce dairy products that are a whole lot more nutrient-dense. Grass-fed butter, you may notice, is more yellow than traditional butter. That's because there's more beta-carotene and more vitamin A. And there's also vitamin K2, which plays an important role in bone health and cardiovascular health. Plus, grass-fed butter tastes so much better. So you just need a little bit to be satisfied. I hope you incorporate these healthy foods into your diet in a healthy way. Thanks, Rachel. Thank you so much, Carrie. You can catch more of Carrie Glassman's tips at nutritiouslife.com and on Instagram at Nutritious Life Official. Uh, up next, the countdown continues. Our good friend Grant Melton is going to show you guys his three ingredient cookies. I call him the cookie man. <laughs> I hope you love this product as much as I do. It will change your skincare game. Our 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 show would not be complete without a look back at Tommy's easy 1, 2, 3s for healthy living. It's our Rachel Rewind. Hey, everybody. I am so excited to share with you today my 1, 2, 3s of healthy living, starting with one exercise that anybody can do no matter what level you're at. No, this is not a fantastic necklace that I am rocking. It is a jump rope. Now, there is a really good reason why doctors will tell you that jumping rope is one of the healthiest heart exercises you can do. It builds endurance, it increases stamina, it burns calories. Yes, it can even improve coordination. So many wonderful things, and it hits almost every part of your body. So it works your lower body, it works your upper body, even your core. Jumping rope is something that's also super inexpensive. I love that. This jump rope cost me less than 10 bucks, and I always recommend starting at about 10 minutes. It's a wonderful place to begin. You don't need to jump rope for 10 minutes straight. You can break that up however it works for you, and you are gonna have the best time ever. Now listen up my ladies and my gentlemen, this is a product for everybody. Vitamin C Serum. Vitamin C Serum is great for fine lines and wrinkles. It's going to firm and tighten your skin as well. And if you have dark spots, which do creep out as we get a bit older, this is great for that as well. You pat it on your face, and then you gently rub the vitamin C serum into your skin. That's it. I apply it every single morning. I hope you love this product as much as I do. It will change your skincare game. 
Now, I started using an electric toothbrush about a year ago, and my teeth have never felt whiter, brighter, or cleaner. Number one, most electric toothbrushes have that recommended two-minute timer built in, so you know how long you should be brushing your teeth for, which I absolutely love. Number two, quite often they're gonna have a sensor, so if you brush your teeth too hard, it's gonna glow red. And that's important, because if you brush your teeth too hard, which I've often been guilty of, that can lead to gum recession, and nobody wants to deal with that down the line. So electric toothbrushes are the way to go. It's changed my life. I love sharing all of these tips with you. Presented in part by Walmart. Save money, live better. So, uh, our friend Grant Milton, uh, he is a former staffer, but for many, many years now, I've been calling him my go-to guy for cookies. He makes me a crazy oatmeal cookie that tastes exactly like a sweet Italian sausage. That may sound gross to you, but it makes me wildly happy. Uh, he has been a part of our show family for many, many years. Even though he moved away, far away, we still try and include him in our shows. And today he's showing us not one, but two cookies that have three ingredients. Let's check out what he's got baking. Hey everybody, it's Grant, and today I'm going to be showing you two three ingredient cookies. The first recipe I'm going to show you today is a three ingredient peanut butter cookie. The three ingredients are chunky peanut butter, a cup of sugar, and one egg. We're gonna start by putting this cup of sugar into the stand mixer. I'm gonna add one egg, and then I'm going to grab the whisk attachment to our mixer. We wanna whisk it a lot. We wanna incorporate a lot of air into this. It'll give us a nice fluffy cookie dough, which will give us a nice soft cookie. So this is what it looks like. It's mostly like white, marshmallowy colored. And I'm just gonna whip it up a tiny bit more just to make sure everything is incorporated. So now our cup of peanut butter, Chunky we're using, hey Chunky, we're gonna put that into our mixer. And we're going to mix this just until it incorporates. Not any longer than that. Perfect. I'm just gonna incorporate the rest of this dough by hand. You can kind of see there's some like white streaks in there. Totally fine, totally cool. I'm gonna start scooping our cookie dough onto a sheet tray. The peanut butter cookies, they won't stick to your tray, so you don't need any parchment paper here. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give them the grandma treatments. I'm gonna start smashing these down with a fork, because that's how my grandma used to do it. And I also like that too, because it kind of flattens the cookies out a little bit. So you just kind of like roll your fork around in that sugar. Give them a smash one direction. Give them a smash the other direction. And then carefully remove. Look at that! Oh my God, he's so cute. And the sugar here just kind of acts as like a non-stick for the fork. So you don't get your fork stuck in cookie dough. So we have our cookies all smashed down. So I'm gonna pop these into an oven at 350 degrees and let them cook for seven to eight minutes. So I actually wanna show you one more tip um, before these cookies are finished. A great way to get cookies nice and round is to use a little biscuit cutter. You just give them a little, like this, and it just kind of cleans up the edges of the cookies so that they're all the same size. There we go. The last thing I want to do with these cookies, they still have this little bowl of sugar. I'm just gonna give them a sprinkle of sugar on top. This gives them a little garnish, but it also gives them a little extra crunch on top. So I'm just gonna let those cool. You want them to completely cool in the sheet tray before you take them off. And while they're cooling, I'm gonna get started on our second three ingredient cookie, a cornflake cluster. And you don't even have to turn the oven on for this one. It's a no bake, baby. The three ingredients you're going to need are milk chocolate, cornflakes, and pistachios. I've already melted our chocolate into this beautiful chocolatey goodness. Ooh, look at that. Yum. And all we're gonna do is throw in our other ingredients. So I have two cups of cornflake cereal, and then I have half a cup of salted shelled pistachios. Now all I'm gonna do is just stir this up and get everybody coated with the chocolate. And you just wanna give it nice light folds, trying not to break up the cereal too much. 
And then, once it's all kind of evenly coated like that, we're ready to start scooping them out. So we're actually going to use a parchment lined sheet tray for this one, so we don't want them to stick. And it's okay if they're loose, because the chocolate will eventually set everyone together. Right after you scoop them out while the chocolate's still a little melted on top, we just want to give them a little garnish. So since there's pistachios in them, I'd like to do a little pistachio garnish on top so people know that there's nuts in there, which is always a good thing to warm people up. And now I'm just gonna let those set for a while until they're nice and firm. All right, here we go. Here is our finished peanut butter cookies and our cornflake pistachio milk chocolate clusters. Look at those. Two super easy three ingredient cookies that you can make with things you probably already have on hand. Thanks so much, Grant. We miss you. Uh, up next, we have interior designer Bregan Jane. She is sharing two decorative and functional items that she says everyone should have in their homes. Check her out. Rachel, Brigham Jane, interior designer and lifestyle expert. I'm going to give you two things you must have in your house that I use every day. All right, Rachel, here's why I love a serving tray. Now, you can use any traditional tray. I like to go out of the box with something fun and gold. Well, who doesn't love a little stone accent? All right, you coming home? What's the first thing we do? We dump everything in our purse on our counter. And when you dump it on the counter, it looks like mess. Simple way to correct that, just put it in a serving tray. It gives all your junk purpose. <laughs> and trust me, everybody's always asking me, how do I style my tables? It's intimidating. Give your stuff something to sit in. And a serving tray is a great way to hide all your knickknacks in the reality of life. And maybe some fruit like you and the kids will grab. Maybe an apple for me helps me make good decisions on my way out the door. But it's the perfect catch-all to anything. The other reason a serving tray is essential is that when guests do come over and you want to serve or bring them something, it's a nice way to have something at your fingertips that you don't have to search for to present things in a beautiful way when you're bringing them around the house. It's just nicer than grabbing it in your hands. All right, my second must have, a basket with a lid with blankets inside. First of all, I don't wanna see your mess, so the lid is a must. But also, I do wanna cozy up on the couch. I just don't wanna see my big, bulky blanket out all the time. This is the perfect way to have instant family movie night. This thing's big, it's hidden away. You're welcome back anytime, and I hope you use those tips. down to number one, our friend Zana Roberts Rossi is telling you guys about one thing we should all have in our closets and how to style it right after this. from five down to one uh, with our number one fashion expert, one of our couple of top favorite fashion experts, our dear friend, Zana Roberts Rossi. So she's gonna show you guys one things everybody, one thing everyone should have in their closet and three different ways to style it. So she's kind of a three and a one. Take a look. Hi, Rach. Today, I am gonna tell you guys about the one piece that you need in your closet, which is the white shirt. This is an absolute foundational must in everyone's closet, and there are so many different ways you can style it. I love it because it is so versatile. We're gonna show you three ways today. One, for the office. Two, for drinks with the girls. And three, for running around errands at the weekend. But when you have this at home, think about the little styling tricks to use with it as well. There are a lot of different elements that can be shifted up on a white shirt as, a, as comparison to, say, a sweater or a blazer. Think about the buttons. Are you going to have it done up or low? Are you going to have the sleeves long or are you going to have them short? Think about the tuck. Never underestimate the power of a good tuck. Is it going to be tight and formal? Is it going to be loose and baggy and easy? Is it going to be crisscrossed and open? There are so many different ways. Here we go. Okay, now for something really unique, the white shirt. I think this is a more unexpected twist, but I've simply taken the white shirt and thrown on a tube dress over the top. 
I love this idea for maybe a more creative workplace, but you're essentially turning the white shirt into a dress. And then popped it with tights, which is great for the cold months. And just a flat. Keep it cool, keep it easy. Okay, now we're gonna take the white shirt into the weekend for errands, running around town, or maybe even a brunch. Simply take an oversized white shirt. I definitely borrowed this one from my husband. Throw it on with a pair of oversized baggy pants. Keep them loose, keep them easy, keep them super comfortable to wear. Sneaker, big brainer. Leave it out. I'm loving the idea of a big proportion with a big proportion. It's kind of a trend right now. Then throw on an easy blazer. A little baseball cap. And I am set for a weekend of chores. We're going to take your white shirt out for drinks. White shirt. Tuck it in a fun skirt. I've got this fun beaded silver one. And we're going to tuck it all the way around. Here's a tip. You want to tuck in from the top, but always, always pull down from underneath. Never just try and shove it in and leave it because you're going to end up with a bulk here. Excuse me. You want to take your thumbs and run them round the waistband to gather all the excess fabric at the back. That way you're going to get a much smoother line here and it looks more intentional when it's all concentrated in one space. Next, I'm going to take the buttons. This is all in the styling. Undo. These, three, and then throw it back over my shoulders. This gives it obviously a much more relaxed, cool vibe. Throw on a heel. And you are taking this white shirt out for drinks. Truly, this is the holy grail of everybody's closet. Rossi is amazing, and again, thanks to Jeffrey Eisner, uh, Carrie Glassman, our dear friend Grant Melton, Bregan Jane. It was jam-packed hour filled with tips. We hope you had fun doing our little countdown with us, and we'll see you when we see you. Bye.